Hello, my name is Ranger Arlene and I'm here at Hill Country State Natural Area. We're here in the group lodge and today I'm going to read a story called Buzzing with Questions, The Inquisitive Mind of Charles Henry Turner. This is a true story, but the book was written by Janice N. Harrington and illustrated by Theodore Taylor III. Questions that itch like mosquito bites, questions that tickled like spider webs, questions you just couldn't shoo away. Questions popped through Charles, Charles Henry Turner's mind like grasshoppers. His brain buzzed with questions about plants and animals and bugs. His parents' home swarmed with books, but never enough books to answer all his questions. Charles Henry Turner asked so many questions that his teacher urged him to go and find out, and Charles did. He read and studied and worked hard, and after he finished high school, he didn't uh, he did what many people thought impossible. Even though he was a janitor's son, and even though most colleges didn't accept African American students, even though it meant more hard work, Charles Henry Turner went to college. In his biology class, Charles met the magnetic young teacher Clarence L. Herrick. Herrick's classes hummed with energy. Students chatting, students examining the organs of small animals, and students staring one-eyed through microscopes. On Friday afternoons, Herrick invited students to his laboratory for spirited talks about biology. He spread tablecloths over the long laboratory tables and set out sweet cakes and cups of tea. But Herrick worried about inviting Charles Henry Turner. He worried that the other students wouldn't want to drink tea with his only brown-skinned student. To Herrick's delight, the other students wanted Charles to join them. They liked the shy, quiet student who always earned high grades, the hard-working Charles Henry Turner. Charles was indefatigable, a classmate said. He spent hours peering through microscopes, planning experiments, gathering specimens, keeping records, drawing charts, and reading scientific papers in French and German. But whatever the language, he never stopped ask, asking questions. One question led Charles to a small, eight-legged, eight-eyed, two-fanged creature, the spider. Charles wanted to know if spiders could learn or if they were only weaving machines that made the same web over and over. Charles searched for spider webs. He trudged through meadows, inspected stone walls, and scouted the sides of railroad tracks. He toppled wood piles, lingered over logs, and peeked into dusty corners. Charles found webs and lots of them. He even spotted double webs that looked, he wrote, as if the spider were trying to fish with two lines instead of one. All kinds of spiders and all kinds of webs caught Charles' attention, even a web between a windowsill and a wall. What would the spider do? Charles wondered if he swept away its web. With the broom, Charles brushed away the web. Not knowing it was part of a science experiment, the unsuspecting spider rebuilt its web. Sweep away, rebuild, sweep away, rebuild. After losing its web for the fifth time, the spider gave up and wove a new home beneath the windowsill. But Charles didn't give up. He repeated his experiment with an arachnarium, a spider jar. He filled the bottom of the jar with sand and pushed a post into the sand. Then he added a spider. He slipped a paper triangle into the jar and watched the spider. Later, he removed the paper triangle and replaced it with an L-shaped tube and watched again. With each change, the spider rewove and reshaped its web. Charles concluded that instinct told spiders to make their webs, but that each spider wove a web just right for its home. 
Charles called this intelligent action. Spiders were not just weaving machines. The end of fatigable scientist then wondered about even smaller animals. In scummy ponds and weedy ditches, he searched for tiny crustaceans. He found seed shrimp, water fleas, and wheel animals. Through his microscope, he admired their small bodies. They were beautiful and translucent, and some looked like a nest of test tubes. Charles even discovered a new crustacean and named it Cypress Herecki, after his friend and teacher, Clarence L. Herrick. But Charles didn't, couldn't, wouldn't stop asking questions. At 39, he returned to school. He wanted to learn. He wanted to ask big questions about another small creature, the ant. Charles wondered how ants found their way home. Did ants have a hidden power in their brains that pulled them to their nests? Did the sun guide them? Did they follow a trail of smells? Searching for answers over the next five years, the indefatigable scientist studied acrobat ants, big-headed ants, false honey ants, and odorous house ants, all kinds of ants. To tell one ant from another, Charles marked their abdomens with watercolors. He built an obstacle course with cardboard stages, cardboard rooms, and cardboard ramps. Ants crawled over the stages, ants scurried over the ramps, ants tap, tap, tapped the cardboard with their antennas. Ants searched for their nests, but Charles didn't help them. Instead, he moved the ramps to unexpected places. He angled ramps up and slanted them down. He painted ramps different colors. He shifted the light in the direction of the light. He smeared stinky oils over the cardboard packs. He caused his ants trouble, trouble, trouble. But by watching ants find new ways to reach their nests, Charles learned how they solve problems. Charles drew a map with squiggly lines and arrows to show the wandering path of a lost ant. A French, a French scientist called this wandering tournament de Turner, or Turner's circling, in honor of Charles Henry Turner, the scientist who taught us that ants were not mindless robots. Each ant used sight, sound, touch, smell, and the movement of its body and sunlight to find its way home. Like the ants, Charles now searched for a new home. He found work as a biology teacher at the first African-American high school west of the Mississippi Sumner High School in St. Louis. Excited by their new teacher, students filled their lab books with notes about his class. One student wrote that Charles set out dishes of jam for bees at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The bees circled and buzzed at each meal. But then, when Charles set out jam only at breakfast, the bees still invited themselves to lunch and dinner. Surprised, the students learned that even bees sense time. Questions kept circling and buzzing in Charles' mind. In a St. Louis park, the scientists placed red cardboard circles in a patch of clover that swarmed with bees. He coated the circles with honey, and then he waited. The bees weren't interested in his circles. They weren't even drawn to the smell of honey. But good scientists are patient, so Ch Charles tried again. He caught bees in a bottle and toppled them over the honey. At first, the bees buzzed away, but eventually they settled on the cardboard to enjoy a sip of honey. Once the bees learned that the red circles carried honey, Charles replaced the red circles with honey-filled blue circles. The bees ignored them. Whether he used circles or cones or boxes or added new colors, the bees kept flying to the color red, even when another color held lots of honey. In 32 experiments, 
No matter how Charles tried to trick them, the bees chose to color chose the color red. Charles Henry Turner was the first biologist to prove scientifically that bees could see color. Bees, giant water bugs, whirly gig beetles, dragonfly nymphs, water striders, paper wasps, hornets, or tent caterpillars, Charles studied them all. He caught, oh sorry, he taught cockroaches to find their way through a maze, proving that they could learn. He triggered moths to beat their wings whenever they heard a whistle, just like Pavlov, a Russian scientist who trained dogs to drool whenever they heard a bell. He frightened doodle bugs, or ant lions, which made them lie still. With a magnifying glass, he studied how they move and trap their food, how ant lions grew, and everything else that ant lions do. Charles learned so much that he became the world's first doodle bug expert. Patiently, he watched a thousand caterpillars crawl slowly, slowly up a vertical maze, learning slowly slowly the caterpillars find their way by trial and error charles henry turner was indefatigable his mazes spider jars paper circles and cardboard stages toppled old ideas about insects he never stopped inventing new ways to study the smallest creatures searching for new ideas or asking new questions. Questions that itch like mosquito bites, questions that tickled like spider webs, questions that only a good experiment could shoot away. As hardworking as the ants and bees he studied, Charles published over 50 scientific papers on everything from bird brains and the bathroom habits of cockroaches to blind crayfish and the growth of grape leaves. He was a pioneer scientist of animal behavior and internationally admired entomologist and one of the leading African-American scientists of his time. But even though he was a respected scientist, Charles faced racial prejudice. He lived in the South, where African-Americans had to attend separate schools and where they could rarely vote. He lived in St. Louis when the terrible East St. Louis race riot erupted across the Mississippi River. Hateful mobs killed more than a hundred African Americans and burned their neighborhoods. Yet, despite this prejudice, Charles wove himself into his community. He raised money for poor families and led a settlement house that sold lunches to hungry children for only a penny. He worked with white and black people to make St. Louis a better place for everybody. Biology, the study of plants and animals, gave Charles hope. He wrote that biology could help people see the connections among all living things. Biology taught us to think less about ourselves and more about others. Charles Henry Turner, the boy who never stopped asking questions, grew into the tireless reader who owned a thousand books. He was a good friend, always willing to help another scientist, by offering ideas, helping with research, or sharing his equipment. If my micro camera proves a success, I shall be glad for you to use it wherever you desire. Charles Henry Turner, the boy who never stopped asking questions, grew into the determined biologist who would stay up all night to watch a spider or spend all day observing wasps, wasps beside a railroad track. I shall take my camera along and get a few photographs. His curiosity danced from experiment to experiment. It moved like Turner circles in Tournament de Turner, always exploring, always reaching to discover new ideas. Charles Henry Turner, the boy whose teacher urged him to go and find out, grew into a teacher himself, a devoted scholar who taught students to look closely, 
to find the webs that connect us all, and just as he did, to fill the world with questions, questions, questions. Um, and so that was Buzzing with Questions, The Inquisitive Mind of Charles Henry Turner.